Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Hope you had a great trading week last week and um, if not, don't worry, uh, there's always uh, the next uh, few weeks, months and even years to uh, improve and get your equity curve uh, growing. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you like the content I provide every week and uh, let's really get into the analysis. So starting off on the week ahead, going to the Trading Economics website, um, zoom in a bit, one second, all right, let's zoom in. And in the week ahead, uh, after last week's last week's sell-off in equity markets, U.S. investors were paying close attention to several speeches by the Fed officials, including Fed Chair Powell testimonies before the Senate Banking Panel and the House Financial Services Committee. So why is that important? Because the Fed is going to give guidance as to what they're doing with mon monetary policy, and um, so it's always good to maybe uh, get some uh, maybe some potential new information, uh, or because really that's the reason why the markets are focused paying attention on on fed officials because that's what really moves the market it's not you know uh, uh price is not it's just a reflection of you know uh fundamentals and and uh, liquidity and value so uh, also flash pmis surveys for the us uk eurozone japan and australia will be closely watched finally cpr data for the uk canada uh, and Japan is set to be released. So let's see uh, what happens uh, this week. But let's go on to the charts and a bit more in-depth fundamentals as to what happened uh, last week and potentially what may happen in the future. And starting off on the dollar index, and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, various other currencies like the euro. Uh, the yen as well as the uh, the pound as well right so got quite a large demand zone there this is a daily time frame chart and looking at where you know what the dollar's been doing uh, it makes sense really for the dollar to keep going higher um, especially maybe in the, in the short term any pullbacks I think of buying opportunities um, the Fed pretty much have um, hiked rates by 75 basis points with the same again in July ING thinks so the Federal Reserve has increased rates by 75 basis points and has signaled the willingness to maintain its pace of tightening at the July's FOMC meeting so the Fed funds rate uh, will end the year well above the 3% uh, uh, um, target or previous target with the dollar set to stay strong but moving harder and faster comes at economic cost Rising recession risk means uh, rate cuts will be on uh, the agenda for summer of 2023. So they're already thinking about 2023. And um, yeah, so there are a potential recession risk, but not for now, not again until the summer of next year. So maybe about a year's time um, and go maybe going into um, next year, the beginning of next year, you may see the dollar um, start, the economy start to go into the contraction phase. Doesn't mean it's a, um, it will go into a recession, but for now, presently in the short to medium term, the next, you know, three months or so, unless the data comes out, um, you know, uh, absolutely terrible, you know, my bias is still to continue to, you know, buy the, uh, buy the, um, the dollar. So um, yeah, there's there's really um, nothing changed on my, on my fundamental bias. Um, so any pullbacks into zones uh, are buying opportunities, not necessarily buying on the dollar index per se, but um, just using the dollar index as confluence. And I think I had another, um, uh, no, I didn't. I thought I had another news story, but pretty much that's, that's it. Um, uh, from a fundamental perspective, again, understanding where the value is and potentially going, going to be, it's really for dollar buys. So um, if you are looking to buy or sell the dollar for whatever reason, uh, maybe you want to go counter to um, you know, what everyone else is uh, doing in the uh, medium to long term. There is a, a bit of a supply zone there, not the strongest area of supply. It could just be profit taking, who knows, but it's pulled back. So it's you know near its highs. But if there is any pullbacks, I think for me, that'd be really kind of buying opportunities on not the dollar index, but the uh, dollar yen, dollar, um, not even the dollar Swiss. I've changed my bias on dollar Swiss. We'll get to that in a sec. But um, looking at the dollar yen, so dollar yen pulled back a bit. Um, I know on the daily um, on a, on an intraday time frame, traders might have been saying, "Well, how comes the uh, 
the dollar's you know sold off after the uh, 75 basis points you know hike and it's really because it's to, for the liquidity right so um just on a really kind of basic level and, and understanding um why price moves in the short term it's generally for liquidity purposes so if you have for example um you know everyone wants to get long right the smart money understand what interest rate hikes typically do for a currency and retail traders you know are um, uh, obviously catching on right the ones that do um, understand fundamentals as well to, for, to a basic level now um, everybody wants to buy yeah now if everyone wants to buy the liquidity is the sell orders right so in order for there to be buying you need sell orders to facilitate the the, the amount of buying that needs to be done right so if there's not enough liquidity, there are not enough sell orders above the market, right, to facilitate the buying for liquidity, then the market has to search for the liquidity below the market, right? And if you're buying, yeah, your stop loss order is a sell order, yeah? This is where the liquidity resides. Hence the reason why you get these moves, you can get these moves to the downside and then all of a sudden it goes to the upside. So traders, it draws traders in. It has the, the also the effect of not only triggering stop losses, but drawing traders in to go short. All those technical traders who, you know, follow um, things like Elliott Wave and, you know, momentum and stuff like that, they start to see these big moves, start to FOMO into going short, yeah? And that induces more sell orders because they're pressing sell to get short on this right and then who's taking the other side of their trade again the people that want to buy for cheaper they don't want to buy up here that's expensive they want to buy down here so that's what happens in the short term you know forget all that nonsense about um you know technical analysis and being able to read certain things the thing is really nobody knows what's going to happen in the short term right um yeah there are patterns that repeat themselves um but ultimately it's all driven by liquidity, which is the reason why you need to understand, you know, key level supply and demand to a, a I guess, a, a more advanced um, uh, uh, level. Because if you don't understand this, then you're always going to get caught on the wrong side of the market, just following price. Because price, and I wouldn't say this is a manipulation. This is more just a function of how the market has to work. But if you don't understand this, and you're just following price and saying that's a big move, and then you're going to want to trying to go short there or shorter levels because you're looking at lower highs and lower lows you're just going to not understanding the bigger picture is that the dollar is they've just hiked rates right and they're looking to buy for cheap yeah which is what the smart money did then um you're just going to keep getting caught on the wrong side of the market constantly so combining fundamentals with technicals and understanding liquidity at least in the short term is uh, is, is what needs to be advantageous to your trading over the medium to long term anyways and that's really what's happened here. So, and I'm not saying that prices are going to continue to go higher and, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen week to week. But generally, the path of least resistance should be to the upside, right? It should be to the upside. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if prices did pull back to, you know, get more liquidity, right? Draw more traders in. Again, the smart money is already bought down here, made some money on the upside. People tend to FOMO in, seeing large candles, and then it just rinses and repeats. Remember, they're not on the timeline that you're on. They can, you know, rinse and repeat for um, days and weeks, right? See this down move here, right? It lasted for weeks. But guess what the smart money were doing? They were just buying, buying, buying. Iceberg orders. You can Google iceberg orders, you know, hiding their, their big orders because they understood that they wanted to go long, right? Um, based off of you know policy um, monetary policy divergences that's what you know the the smart money are doing over the medium to long term whereas you know retail traders and day traders looking at week to week trading the smart money is looking at just the path of least resistance over the long term so yes prices did you know go down but ultimately when you're looking at where prices ended up it's it was always prudent to try to go long you know at, at specific levels anyways um my bias is to the long side so still until the uh the bank of japan who are really the last bank um central bank major central bank anyway to start to look to uh 
uh, high crates unless they start to change their tune uh, then I'm still long on the, uh, the, the the dollar yen so until that time comes it's probably just pullbacks into uh, any kind of demand zone this is a demand as well but it's not I wouldn't say it's a strong area of demand at all um, although intraday you can probably get away with trying to trade maybe around the one the one three two areas one three yeah one three two to one three one fifty or so um and then there's your again your 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 supply zone if you want to get involved in that uh moving on to the dollar swiss and the swiss franc ended up um uh, the swiss national bank ended up surprising the market wrong foot in the market with uh the first interest rate hike in 15 years totally wrong footed traders i was actually um, looking to buy the swiss franc before this but i needed um, some confirmation from the central bank um i got it but it was just obviously a bit too late to take advantage of the immediate move but um my bias now for the swiss franc is to the long side but not really against the dollar um but against weaker currencies but we are now down at these uh, these lows where there was demand here and there was that supply zone uh, from obviously last week um, but uh, but yeah if you do want to be a buyer of the Swiss franc against the dollar uh, then really you're waiting for prices to kind of come back up here um, which wouldn't be a bad shout to be fair I think if uh, prices do, did come up here I can't really see the dollar going much further than uh, this this area here if you don't want to be a buyer of the US dollar then uh, that's going to be the first opportunity but I'm no longer interested in in trading this uh, currency pair anymore um, because the uh, the fundamentals have uh, have changed but uh, those are really the levels to look for if you're looking to buy or sell either currency dollar CAD dollar cad again not really interested in in trading this pair simply because you've got two central banks that are looking to uh, uh that are hiking rates uh, most central banks are hiking rates so um not to say that they're slim pickings but um there's definitely lots of pairs to trade but that, that kind of goes beyond what i'm um, showing you in this uh, sunday video but um yeah, the dollar again. The dollar CAD isn't really a pair that I'm looking to take. But if you are looking to get short, then I think now is actually a decent time to look for any kind of short trades. If you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar, if you're looking to buy the US dollar, then pull back into that one two nine one two eight fifty area or six three area is going to be the the first area you want to look for potential uh, for a buy. The New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, I do think that there's actually a, an opportunity to go short on this. Um, at, uh, and uh, buying the US dollar if prices do come back that high anyway uh, sorry supply yeah if prices do come up back up here I think there is a potential opportunity to get short um, probably more look for a stop hunt around that level but um, it's um, and that's really because I think the New Zealand dollar may have uh, some economic issues in the in at least in the short term anyway uh, there was demand here really a nice technical setup if you wanted to buy the new zealand dollar but i don't know whether prices will really make their way a lot higher um new zealand dollar is still look you know their, their central bank are hiking rates but i think they've they've uh, economically they've they've um stalled a little bit so i'm not too keen on the uh, new zealand dollar although i will buy it against maybe some other currencies but it's um it's down the pecking order on my uh, list of um, currencies to trade. Moving on to the pound dollar. The pound dollar, um, I am still short on this. Been saying, if you look back on my uh, uh, weekly uh, videos, I've been saying to probably get short on the dollar from around early April, and you can see, you know, what's happened. Uh, so I do want to get involved on the dollar. Um, sorry, the yeah, the US dollar against the yes, that goes there um, against the uh, the pound. Uh, the pound are you know the UK economy is is really in um, out of the major economies is probably one of the ones that is doing not doing so great. Uh, let's go to the Bank of England or was it uh, that's it that's the one. So Bank of England resists pressure to follow the Fed into faster tightening. So the Bank of England is stuck to its stuck to its guns. 
and hiked rates by uh, another 25 basis points, resisting the pressure to go faster. So I think the expectation was for them to do a 50 basis point hike. But this, the hawkish spin in the policy statement suggests a 50 basis point is entirely possible in August. But the bigger signal is here is that a pricing a terminal rate closer to 3.5 next year, markets are overestimating the tightening to, still to come. So. Um, I think they're maybe trying to jawbone the um, the uh, the rate hike uh, again. High inflation going higher would probably indicate that they probably may have to start to uh, hike rates a lot, you know, a lot a lot more um, in so far as a bigger rate hike. But um, again, this is at the risk of pushing the economy into um, a recession sooner because the recession has to, um, the economy has to be able to support rate hikes. So. Um, if it can't, then obviously uh, there's problems, right? Now, um, there is a Bloomberg article that says uh, Bank of England and, and Sunak set to step up fight against inflation. And so, um, you know, Britain's policymakers are hardening their attitude towards inflation, preparing to deliver a tough dose of medicine at a time when a cost of living crisis is weighing down on uh that weighing down growth and consumers. So at the moment we're suffering um, from stagflation, although people don't want to say it, but there is stagflation worries, the economy contracting and uh, higher higher inflation. If you want to know what um, stagflation is on my YouTube channel, if you type in stagflation uh, in the uh, search, then there is, an, if you search in the channel, uh, the last few videos, I think I released um, a video which basically explains and breaks down st what stagflation is um, and what the effects are. And um, but I do think that the UK economy is probably one of the worst um, uh, uh, when it comes to um, dealing with the the inflation problem. So I think any pullbacks are going to be nice uh, shorting opportunities. There is demand here, but not really something I'm interested in not at all and we're probably waiting for a pull back up here or uh, there's probably some sort of intraday um stop hunt trade that i'm interested in uh, around these uh, 124 1.2407 area um euro dollar euro dollar so euro dollar is an interesting one um the euro the ecb held a um a, an emergency meeting on wednesday to avert uh, a debt crisis debt crisis 2.0 and it takes so basically the ecb the headline is the ecb tool to avert debt crisis 2.0 takes a take shape as market on edge and so policymakers are working on measures to avoid a bond turmoil so the, it's quite a complex thing and it gets into kind of bonds but uh, a very long story uh, made as short as possible is the fact that the euro the european central bank are trying to avoid a uh, fragmentation of europe so they're looking to hike rates in um uh, in july and but because the european central bank have 19 economies and countries to to worry about Hiking rates isn't as simple as say hiking rates in the UK or um, in the United States or Switzerland or Canada, right? Where you just got one single economy. If you hike rates, it might benefit, for example, Germany or France, but you know, in maybe somewhere like Italy or you know Portugal, um, a rate hike might not be uh, the right thing to do. It might tip them into a recession sooner, right? Which drags may drag everyone else down. So um, they're basically creating a potential tool, a financial tool to help to uh, prevent that fragmentation. That's the, the long story short. So they had to hold an emergency meeting because you know the bond market is uh, very sensitive to interest rates um, as well as inflation. So as are currencies, right? So the, the, the two are interlinked, those two asset classes. So um, understanding that um, the European uh, Central Bank have got a, uh, a lot on their hands at the moment. So uh, for me, at least until you know certain things are sorted, and uh, I, I'm personally, again, still you know shorting the euro. Although my bias will change once the uh, European Union and the, and Europe start to sort themselves out, if they ever sort themselves out, right? Um, so 
any pullbacks for me are shorting opportunities up to the you know the one one oh seven fives to one oh eights. I think anything around there is decent. There is another level above that as well, probably somewhere around there. Um I think that the, the limit of this move is gonna be around the one oh nines, possibly the one elevens, I think. Um but either way, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna go low on the euro any euro rallies for me are shorting opportunities so um that's my bias if you do want to go long on the euro for whatever reason there is um you could look at this area as an area to look for any kind of long trades i mean the move has already happened now um so you know if you wanted to get long then it was really you know down here at that demand zone any kind of pullbacks is decent but the more times the level is touched the weaker it kind of becomes so it's not really something that i'm interested in i'm not looking to buy the euro anyway until um there are some uh, monetary i wouldn't even say monetary policy but i would say more economic um changes uh aussie dollar and the aussie dollar um not looking to trade this pair but if i was um it's a difficult one i'd have to say probably the us is still the one to buy but just barely um it's pretty simple i would say just if you want to be a buyer of the australian dollar then you're looking for pullbacks into a demand zone if you're looking to be a buyer of the um, us dollar which also as well benefits from risk sentiment as well risk off sentiment which there is a lot of risk off sentiment the dollar does tend to do well so but you know you're looking for either a pullback up there or if prices break through that demand zone any kind of pullback to supply would be nice and that would be where the supply zone would be um aussie yen and uh, with the yen still being uh, and bank of japan still being quite uh dovish uh, my bias is still to the upside um on this currency pair i think it really starts from around the, the 90 point uh two two but let's see what happens i think there is an opportunity intraday to get involved i'm not going to go over this setup but it's somewhere around these 92 areas um but from a daily demand zone perspective i think that's decent uh for a potential buy uh yeah i think probably the the lower end the 87s if you can get down there that would be very very nice um if you are looking to short then the 95 91 area to 96 88 will be the one to uh, the, the level the supply zone to look for any kind of short trades um moving on to finally the uh gold right and gold um again it's been a bit of a strange one there was again there is some daily demand there daily demand zoom out a little bit yeah so there was a bit of demand there as well so um yeah gold for me is still a it's still a buy uh last week i spoke about central banks uh to increase their gold holding holdings over crisis concerns so central banks are buying gold um you know and, and again the cheaper it goes uh, then uh, the more they're probably going to end up buying um and there was an interesting article as well from gold's floor prices getting higher top producer newmont says the support is firming at around the one foot um 1500 to 1600 dollar ceo palmer says ceo says prices around the current levels in the next year or two which is um, a bit negative for gold i guess uh and then the head of the biggest producer isn't about to join the bullion bugs in predicting a price rally but tom palmer does see a higher floor forming under the market as years of stimulus dissolve into a fight to contain inflation and um basically he says that the uh, as global markets will on fears of stagflation gold has stayed relatively resilient given its haven status price uh, prices are set to stay around the current levels of $1,800 an ounce or even a little higher amid inflationary economic and geopolitical uncertainties, says Newmont, Newmont Corporation's chief executive officer, and that's downright conservative, uh, a downright conservative view amongst uh, industry peers who have been predicting a much higher price after an unprecedented period of fiscal and monetary stimulus but palmer is willing to project more support when prices dip previously the floor was around 
1200 uh, and now it's probably more like 1500 or 1600 he says so um, looking at a price chart he thinks that probably somewhere around these levels here down at the uh, technically it makes sense I guess you can see where there was definitely strong buying around here these are the 1500s don't know if, if a 1500 right that would be basically where the pen when the pandemic happened um, that's April uh, 2020 so um, if prices do go down I'll be very surprised but um, you never know again the central banks buying uh, and they're buying for the long term so uh, you know uh, I think um, gold should be supported at least down around this uh, 1677 area so let's see what happens um, so there I think gold is supported either way with higher inflation and then if gold if if the, if if there's a recession next year or you know um uh, the, the world starts to contract the world economy starts to contract then gold is still a buy right so either way you slice it gold um should be supported uh, based off of the risk uh, off sentiment so let's see what happens i think there's definitely a nice buying opportunity any pullbacks around there intraday um or even on daily I should say uh, and then you've got this supply zone right here as well quite a wide one uh, but um, it's there supply it's keeping a cap on gold at the moment so with that being said I think that's this week's um, fundamentals and uh, technicals done hope you have a great trading week again don't forget to uh, like subscribe and share with your fellow colleagues um, as it's a free way to support the channel and uh, I hope you have a great trading week and all the best until the next video